Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is the Maki Vlog. Today we're interviewing Rob Perosa with Electrify America to tackle all the harsh questions you may have. So let's go. So I, I, I tease uh, about the harsh questions, but I know yeah. Electrify America is aware of the problems that's sort of ongoing with some of the parts of the uh, infrastructure. But what are you guys doing to, to tackle the issues that people are seeing out there? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's important to understand kind of where we've come from and, and where we're at today and where we're headed, right? So, I mean, four years ago when we started this adventure, we didn't have the luxury to spend two, three years developing a whole new charging system by ourselves. So we had to use what was what we thought best in class in the industry. And we used four different suppliers to help us develop the technology that we've been deploying with ultra fast and hyper fast charging, right? 150 kilowatt, 350 kilowatt charging. And so we've been deploying that and working with each of the manufacturers as, as we've learned more and more about their equipment and how it functions, right? To drive continuous improvement, right? And, and we do that through a few different ways through our center of excellence lab, that's in Western Virginia, where we have every piece of equipment and we have a whole fleet of vehicles where we're continually testing, getting information from the field, right, and trying to drive those correct, those corrective actions and improvements. And we've done several campaigns across a lot of different hardware over the years, right, to, to fix different things that we've seen in the field, right, and, can, and try to keep that continuous improvement going. And then we've implemented different things like a roaming EV fleet where they're going around right. checking every single charger, noting, you know, if the screen's broken or, you know, connect, a connector might be malfunctioning, whatever it is, they're testing every charger, every credit card reader, giving us that feedback so that we can dispatch our team. And then we obviously our knock, our knock, our network operations center is, is pulling all that data in and then assessing it and then dispatching, but also feeding that information back into our suppliers so again, we can drive that continuous improvement. Not all the suppliers have been able to keep up with us in terms of providing support and service. So I think two years ago, we took bold action with one supplier and actually on the East Coast, ripped out all that equipment and put in new equipment um, so that we can still you know, deliver a certain that, that level of service and reliability that we want for our customers, right? And so, you know, we stand behind our equipment and we're, do, we're still doing that today. And over the last four years, we've really taken all the information we have and, and worked with some of the, what we feel are the top suppliers to develop our next generation charger, Awesome, right? And so now we're gonna take that charger and we're having some issues with one particular supplier. And so we're gonna start, you know, in some areas, ripping out the old equipment, that first generation equipment and putting in our, our next generation charger. To the extent we can we can still repair and upgrade uh, those those um, those older sites, we'll continue to do that. But if they can't get to the level of performance we expect, you can see us go ahead and, and change those chargers out. So we've announced our latest our latest effort where we're going to do 300 chargers uh, right. by the end of the year, and so we're going to continue on that path and continue to improve. Right, and this is you know still early days. We're 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 all learning. We're taking that information, but we have the systems to be able to understand what's happening to the network and we're able to respond, right? Uh, you can't do it overnight, right? Right. And so it, it takes time. The other thing we're dealing with is, is like the rest of the world, we are dealing with supply chain problems. Right. So obviously we keep certain inventory of a lot of different parts um, and some suppliers are better than others. And so a lot of a lot of these charges may go down and we don't have the parts to immediately go out and repair. But that's why we built redundancy in any of our, our stations, right? We built four stalls, six stall, eight stall, ten stall sites. So if a charger does go down, there's redundancy there that you can still get a charge. Right. It's still not the, the exact experience we want all our customers to, to go up and see. But that's why we did that, because we knew to drive that confidence, you have had availability, but also redundancy in the system. Now, a lot of your chargers, like as we drove from Denver out here to San Diego, some of them are pretty remote areas. And we're one in particular, Green River, Utah. It's almost like famous because it's, right. it's such an essential stop. The lady that owns the coffee shop there was talking about, there's a, a technician that comes out there and works on the chargers there. And then my thought was, it's like, that's a sort of remote area. Like, how do you get qualified technicians? I'm assuming you're using contract staff in some of these areas. How are, how are you able to meet these demands? And I understand it's like everybody wants them to be operational 100% of the time, but it's a, sort of a specialized field to find people to come out and, and fix chargers. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, whenever we pick a spot to build a site, we have to think about all the other infrastructure that goes around that site, right? 
and that includes the technicians to be able to, to go out and make repairs or to check on stations if we need to, right? So, you know, what we do is we have a full training program where we can get different technicians in, train them on how to repair those specific pieces of equipment. And, and, and make the changes that, that are needed in the field should we have to, to change something in the, in the future. So we train staff in every market that we're in. It doesn't mean that they can arrive in half an hour because some of these are right. remote, but it might if they're within a two hour drive or a four hour drive to get there and repair a station. So that's what we do. It's part of the pre-planning process. As we look to roll out anywhere across the country, we think about what is the, the, the rest of the infrastructure that has to go in around it. So training personnel, making sure we have proper part stock uh, for, for different pieces of equipment, connectors that might break, and things like that. So we have to think about all those different elements before we go into one area. Another question that I was curious about is, so we live in Denver. There's 20, 30 chargers at the last time I counted. If one of those goes down, one, I'm not necessarily in a road trip, so I can just probably go home, but I could go to another charger that's five miles away. But like Green River, Utah, going back to that one again, the nearest charger in each direction is 100 miles. So it's like a, a high priority. Right. Do you, within an electrified area, do you have like certain priorities? Like this is a critical station. If this one goes down, it takes out an east-west route or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, look, Electrify America for a CCS network, we're on that bleeding edge, right? So right. we're going out there first and putting stations out there. No one else is doing that. And, and right? you guys are getting the, the routes. It's, right. it's easy to me exactly. to like deploy them in uh, urban areas like right. some other networks, but they yeah. hit those routes. They hit the routes and then, and be the ones that are, like, we're putting our neck out to say, we right. those routes and we've got to provide a certain level of service. Absolutely. And so those are critical areas. And so we do have different stations that have different severity levels, right? In terms of one person, a metro versus a highway, that's importantly. And then especially on high travel routes like I-5 in California right. or I-95, right? So we have different levels of assets there to help, um, um, you know, take care of those problems when they, when they do come up. But again, you know, we can't, when we're on those routes, right, there's there's only so much we can build. Right. And we're trying to build more and more and more capacity, but it, it takes time, right? And we're at that bleeding edge where the first one's going out there and doing it uh, before anyone else. So it's, it's part of uh, a bit of the growing pains, I would say, overall. But we have the right kinds of systems put in place so that we can we can monitor the stations, we can quickly dispatch, we have we have the whole inventory management system to get the parts that we need to those stations to make the repairs. But along any of that of those chains, right, some of that gets stressed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we have to continually work through that. And again, at the end of the day, if that station's not performing and it can't deliver the level of service that we want, right. we have no issue going in and pulling that, that equipment out and putting the later generation or the next generation equipment in there so that we can drive to make sure that we can deliver a certain level of service to our, our customers. I'm going to mention another sort of famous station. It's been used in a lot of uh, Electrify America promotional graphics. And that's Baker, California. Yeah. We drove past it this time. We didn't need oh. to charge there. But we're, we're excited to stop because you have, uh, first of all, some really cool stuff because it has a awning. But you have some new uh, chargers that you just yeah. get in there. So I keep talking about our next generation right. hardware. That's what we've, we've installed there to, to, as, as, as our, one of our first sites. But that's an exciting spot run. It's a critical area like you've talked about, right, between LA and Vegas. It's a, it's a very important spot. And so we've done some other things like putting in the solar canopy because it gets pretty hot out there. I think right. our, our folks were there earlier in the week. It's about 110 degrees. So, that's when we went through. Right, exactly. <laughs> so it's pretty hot. So having that solar canopy there, we have a huge solar system on top of that canopy. And the other thing what we've done is at Baker, the utility couldn't bring in the amount of power we wanted to be able right. to do all that output. And so instead of waiting for them for three years to actually do the upgrades to bring that power, we actually put a large storage system at that site. So basically the solar system is helping feed the batteries. We're taking it if you can overnight from whatever the utility can provide. Right. And the batteries provide that buffer so we can still provide all that output to the drivers going through. So we're really excited about that site. It's kind of our, our marquee site in terms of technology. Yeah. And, and so you can see we started already deploying more and more battery storage all throughout California and the United States too to help provide, you know, help for the grid uh, and when it's stressed but also you know, be able to, to keep prices um, consistent across the country. Yeah, I, I, I've been out here in uh, California the past week when the grid was being very stressed and it was 
I, I was sort of looking around to see if there were any outages or anything like that, but it seems like Electrify America handled everything well, yeah, even we, with the critical. We made it, we made it through. Uh, like I said, a, a lot of our stations in California have battery storage co-located with the, with the DC fast chargers. So even though 4 to 9 p.m. they were telling everybody, you know, don't charge, turn off all your air conditioners, it didn't matter because the, the battery was there to buffer and take the load to charge the cars, and we didn't have to use any power from the grid. Very cool. So the last time we talked, we mentioned like accessibility and site design. Since that time, we have either the Rivian and F-150 Lightning with people towing now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are looking for like new designs and easier designs. We've seen some, you know, I think we've all seen like the awkward photos of a Lightning or Rivian pulling up and trying to figure out a way to get charged. How is that affecting the new site designs? Yeah, so we're looking at, at that very closely, especially we're looking at pull-through stalls so we can accommodate trucks uh, with, with trailers. We can't do it at every site, right? right. Um, so that's the unfortunate part. So where we can, we are we are starting to, to put those in development. We're also starting to highlight our stations that can. And so we'll be putting out more information on our app or things in the future to help customers know where it's easier to charge with the trailer. And the other thing we're doing is on, on our next generation charger, we have actually gone to a single connector with the large, um, with a long cable length. Right. And so now you'll be able to reach your vehicle without having to worry about, you know, parking in too many different directions. That sounds great. Now, the, the other thing is, is everybody talks about the infrastructure bill and the billions of dollars that's going to be flowing and they expect everything to just happen overnight. I know a lot of this is, you know, it flows from A to B to C and it takes a while. But how is that going to affect Electrify America's expansion plans? Because you have some ambitious expansion plans for the next few yeah. years. We're going to continue to invest, right? So we're not slowing down for anything to wait for additional money to come in. We've got our plan. We know what the industry needs and we want the industry to grow. So we're going to continue to invest. And you're, you're not going to see a slow down with it. I think what's great about the, the NEVI plan is they really took a lot of our feedback in terms of ultra fast, 150 kilowatt charging being the minimum, four stall minimum, Make sure you can do continuous charging, right? Customer, the minimums that customers expect. They want to charge fast and get going, right? So that's great. I think what the NEVI plan does is help fill in a lot of the gaps. Whereas we did, you know, 70 to 100 mile spacing. Now that comes in and fills in those gaps in between. So it's going to add capacity or more, more density to those, you know, longer routes that, that you mentioned earlier. So that's going to help that situation. So we're really excited to see that. I mean, ultimately, we feel they're doing the right thing in terms of the type of infrastructure they're asking, they're asking to, to put out. And that's just gonna help EV drivers in the, in the whole EV movement. That sounds great. Now, I know I've actually suggested a couple of locations for new EV sites. How, what's the best way for people to say like, hey, this is where an EV charger needs to go. We know that there's you know gaps like the Dakotas and West Virginia, but I imagine those are already on EA's radar. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you can go on to our website and read our, our third cycle plan. Mm -hmm. where we kind of lay out the different areas right. we're going to invest in so you can kind of get an idea and we're filling in a lot of that upper midwest uh portion of the country that that we that we've sort of held off until now and so we're really going to fill out the map from a highway perspective so we're excited about that but i think the best way to reach us is you go to electrifyamerica.com there's a place to do submissions on the website so you can you can send in suggestions you can send us a tweet we read every single tweet um, usually we respond to them, but we take all that feedback yes. in. Absolutely. Yeah, we've always gotten pretty decent response. And I know, especially lately, there's been a lot of criticism about EA, some of the chargers being down and whatnot. Uh, but I, I do want to say, like, we've had our, our Mach-E's because uh, we, we upgraded from the one we had. But we have literally never left an EA station without being able to successfully charge our Mach-E. Like, we had yeah. moved saws um, a couple of times. This road trip from Denver, everything worked. I, I think we had like maybe one station that was running at 31 kilowatts, but we wanted to take a long stop there. So yeah. I didn't even bother moving, but okay. but uh, through all the criticism, through all the, the, the outage issues that people seem to have, I have to say from personal experience, we've had, I don't want to say luck because that's how it should be, but yeah. we've, we've actually had good experiences. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of that, again, it's, it's sort of the, the thoughtful planning that went into the station design, right? of building multiple stalls, making sure there's redundancy. Right. Because these things happen. They're in remote locations. It's new hardware, right? It gets really hot in the desert, yeah. right? So things happen. And so a lot of the thoughtfulness that went into the site design still makes sure that it allows you to get a charge no matter what. And I had to wait a little longer, 
but you still got your charge and you got on your way. So, right. so that's the thoughtfulness there. And I think that you got to really put it in perspective because when we look at the numbers and we look at the usage of the network, it's growing astronomically. I mean, we did 1.4 million charging sessions last year, and we've blown that out of the water just already in, in, in this year, and we're going to keep growing. Yeah. So people are using the network. People are getting charges on the network. People are driving everywhere on the network. Yes, we have issues, and we're, we're committed to making that right. And we've demonstrated in the past that we take aggressive actions, right, through what we did two years ago in ripping and replacing six installs. We've made the commitment now to continue that effort to rip and replace 300 charges across the network and continue to improve it. So we're going to stand behind it. The network's growing. There's a lot of good stuff here. The fact that you guys now are driving all over the country, yeah. making videos. You see all these other YouTubers making videos, right? If it wasn't for us, you probably wouldn't have a business. <laughs> right, exactly. So, so I think I think there's a lot of good to point to everything that Electrify America has done. I think we've, we've taken the EV industry to, to the next level uh, and supported all the great EVs that are coming to market now. Um, and, and you know the forethought that we had in doing ultra fast and hyper fast charging, the, the site design with multiple redundant stalls, all those things are paying off because that's exactly what customers wanted and the industry that wanted, needed to go forward. And it's only going to get better with all the nebby things you talked about and more investment that's come into place. It's all building upon everything that we sort of have done, right? We've been at that bleeding right. edge and now it's everyone gets it and, and, and we're moving it forward. So that's exciting to see. Well, thank you for your time. Like I said, it's like we've had really good experiences for the most part. Uh, and I do know that when we have a bad experience, we get like 12 times the number of comments and likes and stuff because people want to focus on that. But uh, I do want to thank EA for allowing this and providing us, uh, you know, a, a path to get out of Denver and go see the West Coast and the East Coast and stuff like that. And uh, I only hope it gets better. Yeah, absolutely. It sure will. All right. Thanks Appreciate a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you.